Today we're going to be unboxing, setting up and reviewing the Scuf Impact, which is a PlayStation 4 and PC controller that's been out for four years. I want to revisit it in 2022 as I wasn't a huge fan of it when it launched in April of 2017. A whole bunch of premium paddle controllers and this is probably one of the worst designs out there. And four years later, surprise, surprise, I'm even less of a fan of it. And for the price, this $160 entry level model is missing a ton of features and included accessories. Let's get it. Not the controller, don't get that, but let's get the video. The Scuf Impact has been sold since April 3rd, 2017, starting at a retail of $160. However, it can get closer to the 300 mark if you start putting on cosmetic options. Granted, this is a PS4 controller, and while that is, well, last generation's console, a lot of people use this controller on PlayStation 5 as long as you're playing PS4 titles. Whenever you try and launch a PS5 game on the PS5, you'll get a little notification in the top right letting you know, Hey buddy, grab yourself a DualSense controller. Since a lot of PS5 owners are revisiting some of their PS4 titles, this is the controller they grab, especially if you have larger hands, as this shell design is not only ergonomically great for bigger hands, but even for average hands, there are a lot of people that laud or praise this as one of the more comfortable controllers on the market. Me personally, I think it cocks my wrist at a weird angle, I always have. Keep in mind, I did review this controller mm, about two years ago, but it's good to get another one in my hand to see if my opinions have changed, because a lot of times that is the case. I have now reviewed several more premium and custom controllers, so my opinion has changed, what I like, what I don't like. Not to mention my production value here has also changed. I don't mind redoing some of these reviews. I don't think my hands have grown in the last two years. I put on a little weight in the midsection, but these th but these puppies right here are the same bunch of bananas, the same bratwurst I've been rocking for decades. Before we start looking at the controller, do you have anything in the box? Not really. You have a little bit of foam here. Not the most dense or premium feeling foam, but you do got foam in there. It's not just some egg carton cardboard and a couple of packing peanuts thrown in there, so that's kind of nice. You do have a little cutout right here, but there's nothing in there. This is strictly for your pleasure. This does nothing over here. You do have a scuff tool over here. And one thing to note immediately from Jump Street, I would say, is that scuff uses some very proprietary tools. If you lose this, you're gonna have a real fickle time trying to get these rings off. And this is how you're gonna swap your thumbsticks out for different heights, domed or concaved, or more realistically, the rubber or silicone compound that they were using in this version here, not on the new scuff Instinct Pro, but on the impact over here, these wear out incredibly quick. Now I will say they feel great, but they do wear out relatively quick. These rubbers will get the job done, they will get torn up pretty quick. This tool is needed to remove these little rings, which is how you get your thumbsticks out, as seen right. Uh! Gotta use some muscle on them. Now, I would recommend minimizing how many times you actually remove and replace these thumbsticks because we all know about stick drift and we all know it's practically an inevitability on controllers no matter how cheap or expensive they are. And since they are using the same Adams thumbstick modules as virtually every other controller company out there, tugging on these thumbsticks, which you do have to use a good amount of force or muscle, can't be good for those modules. Now, this controller, granted I did get this version on Amazon, nothing in the packaging. You don't have a cable, you don't have any additional thumbsticks, you don't have a carrying cable, Case, you don't have any accessories for it or anything. So this thing is bare bones. It is literally the controller and an instruction manual, and that's it. Now, when you do want to customize your Scuf Impact, which is what Corsair wants you to do, hey, you spent 160 bucks on a controller, that's just the entry into the ecosystem, baby. Now you gotta pimp this thing out of its pajamas. Now, when you want to change things out, like these impact rings, the thumbsticks, you can get those accessories on their website. Also, Amazon now does stock a good amount of Scuf accessories. The included instruction manual is good, but not great. It does have pictures, they are not color, but they are descriptive. English is the primary language, easy to read, easy to understand. Now, other than this proprietary tool here, if you ever want to disassemble this controller to make any repairs or maybe paint the shell and customize it, it's a pain in the urethra tip. You have three Phillips head screws, which is good, but this top right one here, you do need a special tool and it is actually virtually impossible to find this. I have an entire drawer with multiple kits of different small tools for when I had a small business customizing controllers, I do one-off custom controllers by order. You, you pretty much have to get it from Scuff and they don't sell it because they don't want you dicking around with their controller. So just expect that unless you jerry-rig these off, which I have done in the past, you pretty much have to send your controller in for repair, which sucks. Another thing that sucks, as this is the generic Amazon version, obviously it's just flat matte black, no big deal there, but this does not have any of the trigger options. So it doesn't have the twist on or off trigger stops and it doesn't have the hair triggers, which come with a little tool, which has a little hole in the top that you can adjust to get just the trigger pull you want. So the only premium feature of this 
controller is gonna be these four paddles, which we are gonna talk extensively about this design. There's no trigger stops on this version. There's no tactile or mechanical face buttons. These analog sticks, yes, they do use a good rubber compound that feels very grippy on the fingertips, but they are stock height, so you're not gonna get any additional leverage with a high right stick. Now, I can't remember off the top of my dome if the impact is compatible with Control Freaks, but guess what? It will pop up on screen right here. The Control Freaks website says it does work with their concave sticks, but not their dome sticks. You do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack sunken into the front shell with a very weird little cutout. This is micro USB, not USB-C, as this controller was designed four years ago. And it also is a proprietary cable because it has this little brick cutout here. And guess what? There's no cable here. So you just have to hope that around your lucky drawer, you have a micro USB cable that's going to fit into this little cutout block right there. So you can't use a really thick one because it simply won't fit. Now this controller is wireless, which is awesome. And it will be able to pair up to a PS5 as well. If you are gonna use it on PC, you're gonna need to plug it into the front of your tower via that micro USB cable, which it's not included. Ergonomically, this actually does feel pretty good. I guess the design has grown on me over time. I do not think it is as comfortable as a standard Xbox One or Series controller or even a PS5 DualSense. It is more comfortable than a PS4 DualShock, which is the console that this is actually for, the PlayStation 4. D-pad and face buttons are poop. Why? Because they are literally identical to the Sony stock switches, the OEM factory switches. When you're paying 160 bucks for a controller, it'd be nice to have mechanical switches like Razer, but hey, even just some more clickier tactile membrane switches would be great. Triggers and bumpers, meh. Nah, nothing to talk about them. They're standard PS4 fanfare. Analog sticks, not great. There's no included options or accessories here, so you have standard height sticks. What does feel good about them is the actual surface. The rubber is very grippy, but they do wear out very quickly and will need to be replaced. Also, these have anti-friction rings or impact rings, as Scuff calls them in their marketing, which basically make it to where it glides along smooth plastic when you are at full lock. However, these are the worst, absolute worst anti-friction rings I've ever tested. They actually feel the same, if not slightly worse and more rough than just the standard front shell on a controller. Moving on from that, the most important feature of any eSports or premium controller out there would be the rear paddles or buttons. This does have a four paddle design and these are horrendous. Probably one of the worst paddle designs on the market. A couple of reasons. First of all, durability. These things are well known to snap. Just pushing up on it, there's an insane amount of flex. I mean, I'm hardly using any muscle on this trigger finger. And look at that flex right there. So you get a young kid playing with this or something, might snap it off, not to mention a drop in the right way. These things crack off. You can get these on Amazon now, but for the longest time, you had to order them from Scuff for about 40 bucks a set unless you add a 3D printer. So that's the first issue is reliability and where to get a replacement when these inevitably break. The next one would be comfort. These don't feel very good in the hand. You cannot comfortably cover all four of the rear paddles. What is the point of having a four paddle module if you cannot comfortably cover all of them simultaneously? You can hold them like this if you want to cover all four, but this is simply not ergonomically comfortable. You can hold it like this, which is comfortable, and then just slide your finger back and forth. That takes a few milliseconds, and in a competitive esports scenario, you might be getting your tits slapped back because of this. Not to mention, these just feel cheap and plasticky because they are. It'd be nice if they put just a little rubberized coating on there or something. Granted, I'm sure you could buy some kind of rubber pad with adhesive on one end. It's just some of the cheapest plastics on this $160 paddle controller. Now you can remove these quite easily by pushing up and then twisting. I say quite easily, it's actually a little finicky in comparison to other controllers on the market, like the Elite, which are magnetized and pop right off. Getting them on is even a bigger pain in the wiener schnitzel. You have to go in at kind of an angle there. Uh, you can't hit it straight on. It ain't gonna do it for you. You gotta go in at kind of an angle. There we go. Got it. Easy day. Uh, one of the stupidest paddle designs out there. Scuff was one of the first companies, Scuff and Logitech and Mad Cats, were some of the first companies to make premium third-party controllers with rear buttons and higher analog sticks and trigger locks and stuff like that. But now in 2022, the competition is thick with three Cs. There are so many good premium and custom controllers on the market. I separate those two because premium and custom controllers are two completely separate things. But there are such good aftermarket controllers out there. That this design is feeling a little bit dated and luckily Scuff, which is owned by Corsair now, knew that and has now done a redesigned PS5 controller called the Reflex and a redesigned Xbox Series controller called the Impact and Impact Pro. I mean the Instinct and Instinct Pro. The Impact is the chunk of crap that we're reviewing here today. Which completely replaced this outdated, stupid, funky paddle design. Also, the plastics on the back shell feel incredibly cheap, which is unfortunate because this front shell is a nice soft touch material, which feels good on the palm, but then the back of your hand wraps around some real funky plastic. I don't like that one bit. So the whole overall feel 
you have these analog sticks which feel pretty good they have a nice resistance to them good rubber but they're stock height and they wear out real quick and when you're at full lock they're grinding against what's supposed to be slick plastic but it ain't it does have a very cocked out shape the ergonomics are very hit and miss with a lot of gamers it's not universally accepted like an Xbox One controller or the Xbox 360 controller or the PlayStation 5 DualSense where the majority of gamers think, wow, this is a comfortable controller. I would say this is about a 50-50 split where people are like, damn, this is the controller for me or why I gotta hold this thing like the guy from Scary Movie 2? And I get that. Both responses are valid. Now I will say the actual switch in the back to actuate these paddles, oh, my mom's calling. We'll call her back. She understands the creative process when I'm in my workflow, in my zone, if you will. So that is satisfying. Granted, they are a little bit noisy so if you are streaming and you do not have a powerful noise gate on your microphone or you're running a condenser mic, not a dynamic, uh, it's going to pick up a lot of those clicks. Honestly, most viewers of a stream understand they're going to hear some keyboard or controller clicks. Just looking at it and feeling it and just looking at the feature set, that's all there really is to say about it is it's just an outdated design. Hey, it is a four-year-old controller, but it's still being sold brand new on the Scuff website. Why does this thing keep coming out? I just bought an iWatch and there's so much slack in here. Granted, I know I got skinny wrists and skinny everything else, but geez. To remap the rear paddles on the Scuff Impact, nah, I'm just fucking with you. This doesn't have remappable paddles. One of the many features that this model is missing. I'll see you back in the bedroom. So I was never a fan of the Scuff Impact, even in its fully loaded $300 configuration with all the bees knees and the mules nips, every option off the storeroom floor. So this model right here, which is $160 on Amazon currently, is pure bare bones stripped down to a skeleton crew. Even on the fully loaded version, which does have remappable paddles, it is the worst remappable design I've ever seen in my life. Yes, it is remappable on the fly, so you don't need a software program or suite. However, you have to have a little magnetic uh, circular disc that you snap onto the back in order to remap them. That's dumb. What if you lose that? Which a lot of people will. What if your dog eats it? Well, what if you didn't get an optional carrying case because that's additional money and you lose it? Yeah, that's that's just a stupid design. These paddles here, there, there really ain't much you can do for these. It doesn't matter if you get the $160 base version or a $300 decked out version, they're still gonna have this terrible paddle design. Ergonomically, it's okay, but it's there, there are definitely much more ergonomically comfortable controllers out there. I mean, there's better big handed controllers out there than the Scuff Impact. Then you get to the features about this being, well, simply outdated. It's a PS4 controller. The PS5 has been out for over a year now. Yes, a lot of people still can't get their hands on those units, but they are becoming well, somewhat more readily available. Still not so much. The Series S, you'll find those all over the place. The Series X, not S, but the Series X, the PlayStation 5 and the Switch OLED are still a little bit hard to find. Valve Steam Decks are getting scalped already and they're not even released yet. It, it, this is just the world we live in. 30 series graphics cards and whatnot. You got to get under a bridge and start churning butter like you're Amish for one of those. I would not recommend this particular model buying this bland one off of Amazon because, well, no remappable paddles. And since there is no builder on Amazon, you just buy it as is a pre-built. You cannot select what you want these bound to. So whatever bindings are right out of the box from Amazon or scuff then to Amazon, that is what you're stuck with and you cannot remap them. So you have no idea what these are going to be mapped to, making them completely and utterly useless. Uh, the next thing, it doesn't come with a cable. Granted, this is wireless. You know, I'm connected to my PS5 right now. The micro USB cable, you need to have one, which a lot of people are just kind of throwing those out and going to USB-C and lightning cables now. So hopefully you have one that will fit into that little slot that cut out there. No optional thumbsticks. You need a special tool to change out the thumbsticks, which you'll probably have to do because these wear out incredibly fast. These anti-friction rings actually make it worse than just a standard controller with no anti-friction rings. So sharing my screen, I'm over here on the Scuff website and you can build these out. This is the model that we're testing here today, $160, doesn't really have any features or anything. Then you have the Impact Pro and the Impact FPS. And these are gonna add things like trigger stops, like that remappable paddle system, which requires a little tool or doohickey that you're probably gonna lose. Include additional thumbsticks in the box but here's the thing. Here's the real nail in the coffin for anybody that actually takes my advice to heart. So this is $160. Most controllers in the $160 range come with swappable thumbsticks, trigger stops, and an actual good usable remappable paddle system. None of which of those features I just named are included here. In fact, many controllers in that price point come with a nice carrying case to hold all your accessories so you don't lose them. Almost all of those controllers, including the Microsoft Elite 1 and 2, have better quality control than Scuff. Now, granted, they were acquired by Corsair a couple years ago, and Corsair has been whipping their QC process into shape and making sure that less units become damaged within the first six months. I have heard horror stories from the gaming community, specifically controller players, dealing with the Scuff customer support. So what is the warranty with Scuff, or Corsair, I should say? Six months on their controllers, which is very 
short in comparison to controllers that have one or two year warranties or even aim which has a lifetime warranty granted they do not cover stick drift because they are starting with a licensed microsoft xbox or sony playstation controller and then just modifying from there so they don't make their own thumbsticks or anything so technically that's not even their component but still i think they should cover that it's not going to happen but I, I would like to see it and there are so many other controllers that i have tested in the 150 to 200 dollars price point so the same general bracket or range of this controller that will run laps around it performance wise ergonomics wise warranty wise reliability wise and overall does not feeling like a goddamn boomerang in your hand uh so would i recommend the scuff impact no not for anybody i didn't like it back in 2017 when it was actually for a console that was currently you know in generation but now that this is based on an outdated console the playstation 4 which don't get it twisted the playstation 4 is now last generation not to mention for the price the price to performance what you're getting feature set wise is far under par for the course for my golfers out there there is a tab on my youtube channel as well as the description in every video to my merch store in case you're sick of being naked i also have coupon and discount codes for many products including custom controllers and gaming chairs found only in the description of my videos check me out at facebook gaming where i am a partner and upload a ton of exclusive gameplay content join the community discord to chat with myself for the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven and while i love each and every one of you bucking broncos equally if you want to become a stallion or stallionette by supporting myself as well as the channel clicking on the membership tab allows you to become a member of gamer heaven where you unlock a ton of exclusive perks smacking the thumbs up button otherwise known as liking the video will help it to get seen by more gamers this information will reach in the system as well subscribe for more content like this i cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and youtubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews keyboards mice headsets controllers mics chairs etc and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily usually most of the time peace